What is happening everyone? Hope you all are keeping well and safe wherever you are and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at dialing in one of the many secrets of Mr. John Petrucci's guitar tone, specifically his solo tone, to be honest. I'm calling it the seven millisecond secret sauce. What's it all about? Let's dive in and find out right away. So you may ask, what is this 7 millisecond secret sauce, GD? And that's actually a very good question. You see, if you've ever heard any of Mr. Petrucci's isolated guitar tracks, there are tons of out there, to be honest. So just search on YouTube, you'll find a lot of examples of what I'm talking about. Dream Theater actually is known to release these isolated tracks as a special edition of most of their albums. What I'm talking about specifically is the solo tone. When you hear those examples, when you hear the solo tone, you will hear the specific sort of modulation going on in the solo tone. It almost sounds like a chorus and actually to be honest, I mistook it as a chorus for a very, very long time, but it's actually not a chorus. It's actually more detailed than that. So what is it all about? I'm gonna to refer to an article which I found out after a lot of research and just to be clear, I'm gonna read a small passage of the article and I'm gonna link the article down below in the description box so that you can go ahead and read it and find out what it's all about. Actually, this article is from 2006. Speaking of 2006, how's 2020 going for everybody? It's June already, really. Half of the year is gone and it's been a roller coaster, isn't it? Hope you're keeping safe on that note wherever you are. Anyways, back to the article. I'm gonna read this part over here. I use a seven millisecond delay settings between the left and right speakers on pretty much every sound. Editor's note, this is a technique utilizing a delay setting whereby one half of the signal, either the entire left or the right channel is delayed by a slight amount in order to create the illusion of depth and space between the speakers. The delay is set to 100% wet with 0% feedback so that the entire signal for that channel is delayed by the set amount with no dry signal or repeats present. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory to be honest. So if you have a left signal and a right signal, other way around for you because you're facing me. What this talks about is taking one of the signals, let's say the left signal and delaying it by seven milliseconds and then merging those two to create a stereo sort of an effect. It really creates an interesting sort of a sound which is unlike other and it's very, very unique in its own self. I've been actually chasing this one for many, many months and I've not been able to figure it out. But I finally think I've got somewhere close to it and what we're gonna do is find out how we're gonna dial that in into the AxeFX today. And this is where I think the power of the AxeFX really shines through. So how are we gonna do this? Let's dive into the Axe Edit and AxeFX 2 and try and dial this in. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, guys, we've got Axe Edit loaded in front of me and I've got the Axe FX2 open. Obviously, they're going to work together. And I'm playing my Ernie Ball Music Man JP15, which is a guitar of Petrucci's choice. And I've got the Ernie Ball regular Slinky strings on there for reference. And I've got a preset dial in front of me, which is a good enough solo sort of a tone or a lead tone to start off with. Uh, it's nothing but a 2C++ amp and a you know, a V30 stock cab. I'll go through each of the sections so that you can see how the tone is dialed in. But first, let's hear how it sounds. I think that sounds really good. I'm going to take you through each of the sections. Remember, this video is not about the tone or the preset. This is not a tone quest series video, but we'll go through each of the sections so that you can also dial it along with me. This is the amp. It's got these settings over here. Uh, it's a 2C++, as I said, and the GEQ is that famous V curve. I've got the bass slightly low. You might want it a little higher. Uh, the cab is a V30 Petrucci mix, which is a stock cab from the XFX mic with a 421 dynamic mic. Good amount of low cut and fair amount of high cut going in over there. And nothing else has changed over here. The delay is a ping pong with 500 milliseconds. I'm not playing to a specific tempo here. 
feedbacks around 33% and uh, the spread is around 45%, good amount of mix 25%, but with that good amount of mix comes a lot of repeats. So to subdue those repeats and have them in the background, I always do this trick of cutting off most of the highs from the repeats so that they sit in the background and don't interfere with your actual tone. I cover this in detail in my other video for the bass tool uh, warrior tone that I dialed in earlier. So go check that out if you haven't done that. So now that you've heard the tone, how do we do that seven millisecond delay thing that we just talked about in the previous part of the video? Did you miss it? Go ahead and watch it. <laughs> It'll make more sense this way. So we're gonna pretty much stick to what the article said. We're gonna use a delay block over here and this is where the real power of the AxeFX tool shines through because you have these layers and the first thing that probably come to your mind is that let's repeat the entire signal. We can do two amps, we can do two gaps, we can do two delays, but that's not what we're gonna do because uh, you pretty much run out of CPU power the moment you start trying to do that. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is going to, going to go and add another delay block over here, which is gonna be a digital mono. And what we're gonna do is tweak it to make it so that it repeats the entire signal by seven milliseconds. That's pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is change this time to seven milliseconds as advised, and I'm gonna bring the feedback down to 0%. By the way, it's a digital mono, not a digital stereo. So keep that in mind. Mix, I'm gonna push up all the way to 100% because we wanna repeat the entire signal chain and not leave anything behind. We want the whole thing to be repeated. So what I'm gonna do is now connect these guys over here. And what this is going to do actually is take the signal chain and repeat everything by seven milliseconds and push it back into the signal chain before the delay. Not the best ideal way to do it, but yeah, it's pretty good way to do it actually. So let's hear this, how this is sounding. Now you might say this is sounding pretty intense and it's not really sounding like the kind of tone we want. It's doing the thing that we wanted to do, but it's a little too intense to be honest. And this is where the level would really, really help you a lot. So what you can do is tame this level and bring it down to suit your needs so that you can control, something's in my eye, so that you can control the level of this second layer of delay that we're adding on top, second layer of the tone that we're adding on top of the existing tone. So what I found out is a good place to start off is like minus nine dB, which is gonna give you that sort of setting. And keep in mind, this is for a mono sort of a setting that I'm doing, which I believe most of you guys must be on, but we'll cover the studio part as well later. So when you do that, this is how it sounds now. That is sounding really good to my ears and that is a unique sound in itself which I don't believe you can get by using a chorus or anything else. Well, not exactly, I'll cover that in a bit. Now, if you wanna take this a little step further is that if you're using a stereo setup like I am, now I'm going from a guitar mono into the AxeFX2 and from there I'm using the balanced outs to come into my Moto sound card and uh, with sound card, you can find out in my Gear Studio Tour video. It's there in the channel, go and check it out. So it's going stereo into that device and then I'm going directly into the DAW. So since I have a stereo output, what I can do is actually take this a step further is to try and uh, take these two signal chains and split them in a studio wave. So to do that, what we can use is actually a mixer. What this allows you to do is control the volume or the gains of each of these layers. So one of these, it's called a layer or a lane, whatever you wanna call it. So the mixer allows you to control the mix, uh, the levels or the balance as well. So pretty interesting, but important thing to keep in mind is that the mixer needs to be placed right over here where the two lanes are meeting into one. Otherwise, if you place it over here, for example, after the delay, it's not gonna work. Thank you, Leon, for that amazing tip. I was going nuts why the mixer is not working actually. But anyways, for it to work, we need it over here. What we're gonna do is take lane one, push it all the way to the left, other way for you again. Take lane two and push it to the right, which is gonna give us this sort of a stereo effect. 
Now, the moment you do this, what's going to happen is since we push that level down quite a lot, it's obviously not going to sound very right. The left channel is going to sound very, very weak. So let's bring it back to zero dB. Handy tip, double click to reset any particular knob. It's a very helpful tip. So with that done, this is how we're sounding. Now I still feel the left signal is slightly weak than the right signal so and this is where you'll have to use your ear to kind of balance it out as much as you can and probably you can use some sort of meters to in your door to kind of figure this one out but for now what I'm going to do is push this one up to around 4.5 dB what I'm doing is trying to level the left and right signal chains so that I get a balanced sort of an output. <laughs> That's sounding nice. What about some other parts? That also sounds nice. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on playing many parts over here, but I want to call out that this kind of an effect sounds really good up in the higher register of the guitar. Like if you, that's probably where you play most of your solos and that's probably where Petrucci plays most of his solos as well. So that's pretty much the studio setup. Uh, and I know some of you might question, what if I don't have two delay blocks available to me. Um, I'm not sure if AX8 allows two delay blocks, but in case, let's assume you don't have two delay blocks. There's another way you do it is by using a pitch detune. Uh, what I'm gonna do is delete this and get back to what my original patch was. Quick tip, if you press delete key on a particular item, it deletes it and disconnects it as well. Handy tip. Uh, for the mixer, I'm not gonna use the delete key. I'm gonna use the shunt command that removes it and cleans up the signal chain remains the signal keeps the signal chain as well to be honest what i'm going to use is a detune over here pitch detune and now we're not going to use any detune to be honest but we're going to use this trick over here which is a seven millisecond delay in the second voicing and, and i believe i set the pan one and pan two to left and right 100 percent uh, the mix, I kept it around 75%, 100% I think sounds a little too intense for me, but this is not the same effect as what you would probably get from the delay trick that we saw. Switch it on, let's hear it how it sounds. Let's uh, play that part. I think that that should pretty much give you an idea as to how to do it. Now you might ask, what if I don't have an axe effects and you're watching this video and you're pretty much typing in the comments below, how do I do this in this model? How do I do this in that model? <laughs> to be honest, I don't have access to all of the modelers. I am not that rich. <laughs> I barely can afford an axe effects too. And a guitar, I saved a lot for this guitar to be honest. But anyways, so if you uh, are not having an axe effects too and you wanna do this, you can try and do this in your DAW as well. And I'm not gonna go into detail about that uh, in this video, but what I think every DAW, almost all DAWs that I know of at least, at least Cubase does allow that, is to offset your tracks by a certain amount if you want to line it up. Let's say your take is not very perfectly on the click, you can offset a little bit as well in milliseconds. And I think that's gonna be really handy in this case. So what you can do is arm two tracks together, record your guitar in both the tracks, the same signal chain. And then what you can do is take one of those tracks and delay it by offset it by seven milliseconds so that you get that kind of an effect. But the caveat here is that you should not use your delay from your modeler in this case. You should probably use the delay from the DAW itself because otherwise you'll have two delays going on and that's not what you want. So keep that in mind and I hopefully that should help you in getting that kind of an effect in the DAW as well. The third way and the most difficult way to do it is to play like Petrucci. <laughs> and do for the first take which is absolutely spot on time and do your second take which is seven milliseconds delay <laughs> so let's pray together and hopefully we can play like petrucci
that's not gonna work, is it? Well, that's pretty much it, folks. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and hopefully, this video can help you get closer to the Petrucci sound. And if it does, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, make sure you like it, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that it can help you and help me as well. Anyways, I shall see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, it's gonna be a Tone Quest one. Stay safe, guys, and I shall see you very soon. Keep rocking. Bye bye. Cheers. Thank you